Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Ghost, Scary Stories. This episode is titled Spirits of the Speakeasy, a New York Ghost Story. Part 3, The Price of Silence. The musty air of the broken bottle's basement enveloped Eddie Hernandez as he stood at the foot of the stairs, his flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. The whisper of Sophia's plea still echoed in his ears, spurring him forward into the unknown. As Eddie moved deeper into the basement, the beam of his flashlight caught something he hadn't noticed before, a thin seam in the wall, almost invisible unless you knew where to look. His heart racing, Eddie ran his fingers along the seam until he felt a slight give. With a deep breath, he pushed. The wall swung inward with a low groan, revealing a hidden room beyond. Dust motes danced in the beam of Eddie's flashlight as he stepped inside, his eyes widening at what he saw. The room was small, barely larger than a closet, but every inch of wall space was covered with photographs, newspaper clippings and handwritten notes. At the centre stood a small desk, its surface littered with faded papers and an ancient typewriter. What is this place? Eddie muttered, his voice barely above a whisper. As if in response, a chill ran through the room. Eddie's flashlight flickered and for a moment he could have sworn he saw a figure standing in the corner. A man in an expensive 1920s suit, his face twisted in a sneer. But as quickly as it appeared, the figure vanished. Eddie turned his attention to the desk, his hands shaking slightly as he picked up the topmost paper. It was a letter, the ink faded but still legible. My dearest Sophia, I fear our time is running short. Blackwood suspects, and his reach is long. We must act quickly if we are to expose his crimes and free ourselves from his grasp. Meet me tonight, after your performance. Together we will bring an end to this nightmare. Forever yours, Daniel. Eddie's mind raced. Daniel. This was a name he hadn't come across in his research. And what crimes was he referring to? What had Thomas Blackwood done that was so terrible? As Eddie continued to sift through the papers, a story began to emerge. Daniel Sullivan had been a journalist working to expose the corruption and criminal activities that plagued New York during Prohibition. His investigation had led him to the Broken Bottle and Thomas Blackwood, but Daniel had not anticipated falling in love with the beautiful singer at the center of it all, Sophia Bellamy. Through Daniel's notes and letters, Eddie pieced together the truth. Blackwood's speakeasy had been a front for a much larger criminal enterprise, one that reached into the highest levels of New York society. Politicians, judges, police captains, all were in Blackwood's pocket, paid off with money earned through bootlegging, gambling, and worse. Sophia had discovered the truth, and together with Daniel, had planned to expose it all. But Blackwood had found out. Eddie's hands trembled as he read the final entry in Daniel's journal. Sophia is gone. Vanished without a trace. Blackwood claims she ran off with another man, but I know the truth. I can see it in his eyes, in the smug satisfaction of a predator who's devoured his prey. I will not rest until I uncover what he's done, until I bring him to justice. For Sophia, for all those he's hurt, no matter the cost. The journal ended there. Eddie's research had never turned up any mention of Daniel Sullivan or his investigation. It was as if the journalist had disappeared as completely as Sophia herself. A soft sound behind him made Eddie whirl around. There in the doorway stood Sophia's ghost. Her eyes were filled with a mixture of sorrow and urgency as she pointed to something on the desk. Eddie turned back, his gaze falling on an old photograph he hadn't noticed before. It showed Sophia and a man he assumed was Daniel standing in front of the broken bottle. They were smiling, happy, unaware of the tragedy that awaited them. But it wasn't Sophia or Daniel that caught Eddie's attention. It was the man in the background, partially obscured but still recognizable. A man Eddie knew all too well. Abuelo, 
Eddie whispered, his voice filled with disbelief. The ghost of Sophia nodded slowly, a sad smile on her translucent face. And suddenly, Eddie understood. His grandfather, who had always been tight-lipped about his youth in New York, who had steered Eddie away from asking too many questions about the past, he had been there. He had known Sophia and Daniel. As the realization washed over him, the room began to spin. The walls seemed to melt away, and Eddie found himself transported once again to the past. He was in the broken bottle of the 1920s, the speakeasy alive with music and laughter. But this time, he saw it through different eyes. He saw Sophia on stage, her voice captivating the crowd. He saw Daniel at a corner table, scribbling notes while pretending to enjoy his drink. And there, behind the bar, was his grandfather, younger but unmistakable. Eddie watched as his grandfather slipped a folded note to Daniel, his movements quick and furtive. He saw the look that passed between them, a mix of determination and fear. The scene shifted. Now Eddie was in the alley behind the bar. Sophia and Daniel were there, talking in hushed, urgent tones. And watching from the shadows was his grandfather, standing guard. Another shift, and Eddie saw Blackwood confronting Sophia in his office, his face contorted with rage. You think you can betray me? Blackwood snarled. You'll regret this, you and that meddling journalist both. The visions came faster now, a dizzying whirlwind of images. Eddie's grandfather helping Sophia escape through a hidden passage. Daniel confronting Blackwood, only to be overpowered by the gangster's thugs. Sophia returning to save Daniel, walking into a trap. And finally, the most horrifying vision of all, Sophia's lifeless body being hidden away, her killer's face obscured in shadow. With a gasp, Eddie found himself back in the hidden room, drenched in sweat and trembling. Sophia's ghost was gone, but her presence lingered along with a bone-deep certainty of what he had to do next. The truth of what happened to Sophia and Daniel had been buried for nearly a century protected by a web of lies, threats, and silence. But that silence had come at a terrible price, not just for Sophia and Daniel, but for everyone who had been forced to carry the burden of this secret, including, Eddie now realized, his own family. As he climbed the stairs back to the bar, Eddie's mind raced with questions. How much did his grandfather know? Why had he never spoken of his connection to the broken bottle? And most importantly, who had actually killed Sophia? The bar was quiet as Eddie emerged from the basement, but he could feel eyes upon him. Not just Sophia's ghostly gaze, but the weight of all those who had been silenced over the years. He knew that by digging into this past, he was putting himself in danger. Whoever had killed Sophia might still be out there, or their descendants, willing to kill again to keep the truth hidden. But as Eddie looked at Sophia's photograph on the wall, he knew he couldn't stop now. He owed it to Sophia, to Daniel, to his grandfather, and to all those who had suffered under the weight of this secret to uncover the truth. I'll make this right, Eddie promised, his voice barely above a whisper, no matter what it takes. As if in response, the lights in the bar flickered and a cold breeze ruffled Eddie's hair. The spirits of the broken bottle were restless and the past was closing in. Eddie Hernandez stood at the precipice of a truth that had claimed lives and shattered families. Little did he know, the most dangerous part of his journey was yet to come. For in seeking justice for the dead, he had drawn the attention of those among the living who would do anything to keep the past buried. The stage was set for a final confrontation, where the sins of the past would collide with the present, and Eddie would be forced to confront not just the ghosts that haunted the broken bottle, but the darkness that lurked in his own family's history. Ghost is a Calaroga Shark Media production. 
Written and hosted by Alexander Ian McIntyre. Produced by Mark Francis. Executive producers Mark Francis and John McDermott. Portions of this podcast may have been created with the assistance of AI. This show, along with hundreds of others from Calaroga Shark Media, is available commercial free on any player. Hassle free. Just look for the link in the episode or show notes. Ghost now has merch. Find shirts, mugs, and more with the Ghost logo for sale at our merch store. There's free shipping and 10% off now with the coupon NEWMERCH10. Did we say there's free shipping? Check out all the goods at caloroga.com, that's C-A-L-O-R-O-G-A.com, or just look for the link in the show notes. Thanks for supporting the show, we really appreciate it. Caloroga Shark Media, 